What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Shock and Out Toy Reviews. Two, sometimes three idiots, a camera and a review. Sitting to my right is the bearded thunder. Mr. Berg. And to my left is Mr. Science himself. Dofer. This is a different and very special review episode. We are doing the top five toys of 2017. Ish. Each one of us has chosen our top five toys, and we're going to be going through them. Spoilers. All this shit on the table is not on any of our lists. Previous winners and contender for this year. No. No, not at all. But it's Mark Hamill. <laughs> what? That's Simpsons Mark Hamill. Uh, he's force projecting himself and his voice. We each are going to have a honorable mention, and an honorable mention is something that didn't make our list, but a toy that we did get this year. An exception to the rule, though, is that the toy doesn't necessarily have needed to come out in 2017. We could have gotten it in 2017. We don't give a f how old the toy is. It was just a toy that we liked enough to mention it and wish it could be on the list. If that makes any sense to anybody. No? Nope. Okay, moving on. What's your honorable mention? So Mr. my honorable Earth? mention is the Spider-Man Homecoming version of the Spider-Man figure that was one of my top five figures last year. And I said it might be the toy of the year next year because yeah. it might be in better colors. It is not. It is not. I hate the web pit things. <gasps> so no, I still love this toy. He's, he's still awesome. super fun. I don't think he's as good as I wanted him to be and he did not come with as much stuff. No, I thought he'd come with like what you said yeah. last year with like a head and all this other yeah. crap. No. His web pits are not present. Correct. No. So they're a removable accessory. Yes. I I glued mine in. I liked them so much. Gotcha. So this is my honorable mention. I should also say there would have been another one. It was the Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy Nebula figure she would have actually probably made it on the list except that her foot snapped off i really loved this weijang optimus that one of our listeners had suggested we look at and i got him and he is fantastic i'm pretty sure he didn't come out this year he probably didn't even come out last year it could have been like two years ago but regardless i got him this year I liked them. I got the Battle Damage version, too, and I've still considered buying the Black Nemesis version. He's the best movie character toy that I own, and I love him to death. Statement. Tofer. So my honorable mention this year is for the Marauder Task Force Valkyries figures. In general... I think that Marauder Task Force is doing a phenomenal job. Their modular mayhem figures, the you know the regular dudes, totally filled the void left behind Hasbro's abandonment of GI Joe, and they have continued to produce new and wonderful stuff. The reason that I put these as an honorable mention is because it's not like buying other toys where you just buy a certain character. Mm -hmm. This is more like a customizing kit where you get all sorts of different colors of different pieces and you put them together however you want to. Huh. It's it's a little bit of a different experience. It's much closer to customizing than opening and playing with a toy. Uh, the paint applications are, are nice. The articulation's great. The sculpts are great. Everything about them is wonderful. And these figures in particular I participated in the Kickstarter for. And it's really nice to see that they were able to produce some female characters that don't look stupid. Because if you look at the recent attempts of Hasbro to infuse some female characters into their G.I. Joe line, most of them are terrible. Everything that Marauder Task Force is doing is phenomenal. And I'm super excited for what they're planning for 2018 because they're going to be doing World War II historically accurate oh, three and three quarter inch wow. scale figures. So... I can already feel myself going all in on that just based on the quality that I've received this year. What is your number five? So my 2017 number five is the Vitruvian Hacks Series 2 Night of Asperity from Boss Fight Studios. A badass toy. A badass toy. I'm not a super huge fantasy guy. So initially I was like, ah, fantasy guy. I haven't been buying these as heavily as I bought some other stuff when I got this guy. It reminded me why I felt good about ordering any of the fantasy guys from Boss Fight Studio. It, like, he's just amazing. 
His yeah. articulation is perfect. His sculpt is perfect. Everything about this figure just makes me happy and makes me want to have this guy killing a bunch of other fantasy guys. And he comes with a lot of extra stuff. He comes with a sword. He comes with alternate head, alternate hands, alternate helmets, shield. The boss fight guys are a little expensive, let's be honest, but they do a good job of packing in a lot of stuff. And when I opened him, I was super giddy and excited and didn't even care. My number five toy of the year is the Marvel Legends Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man Homemade Suit. Lots of home in that, homie. <laughs> I like him because he reminds me very much of the Spider-Man that Rick brought out earlier. But I really liked this design. My son and I really liked playing with it together. He just looks cool. And I thought he was done very well. Just fun toy all around. He looks awesome. I yeah. love the hood. Reminds me of the Toy Biz original Spider-Man movie figure. He comes with a hood that you can put on him that is up. Oh, really? Yeah. You didn't bring it, though, did you? I did not. Shocking our tradition. Of course, because I couldn't <laughs> find it. <laughs> to my credit. I was extremely hot. Well, all right. <laughs> I was lucky enough to find the toy. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> this guy's awesome. He's also part of the reason why my honorable mention is my honorable mention, because yeah. he's way more fun, and he comes with the double hands and hoods. I love the design of this guy. He's flawless. It's right up my alley. All right, so my number four toy of the year is Sideshow's Evil Dead 2 Ash. He's way overpriced, which is why he's number four. Hmm. And his pants, while authentic and have all the tears in one or four, are too tight, so you can't really do much really good posing with his legs. Hmm. Everything else is awesome. His face is awesome. He comes with a ton of accessories, comes with the severed hand. There are bullets to go in his gun. Really? This is my favorite version of Ash out of all the Evil Dead stuff. And this one is by far the best version of this that I own. The only way he'd be better is if he was a NECA toy and $25 <laughs> as opposed to whatever ridiculous sum I paid. Good job, Sideshow. They've come such a long way with the toys that they make. Yeah. I mean, if you had told me that this was a Hot Toys figure, I wouldn't have questioned it. It's really, really nice. My number four is Thunderstorm from the Garatron, um, what I know as third-party Thunderwing, and that's why I had to look up the company that made him. I apologize. He's part of their gods of devils. Yes. Think. This guy is amazing in so many ways. Very articulated, very sturdy, very fun to play with. The paint's fantastic. I really hope we see more stuff from this company. All I know is that this guy's been the only thing. Um, he's just great. The only problem was he had a hefty price tag, but they knocked it out of the park, man. He's big and crazy, and he looks really cool. And his alt, both his alt modes are amazing. Number four is the Hasbro Titans Return Deluxe Quake. Remember when this wave was getting ready to ship and I kept asking you, has Quake shipped yet? Has Quake shipped yet? Quake was one of the figures that I had when I was a kid that I always really loved. I was super excited that I was going to be able to get Quake again. He's just a repaint of another figure. I had that other figure, yeah. Hardhead, yeah. and I knew how good he was. So I was so excited. The character I knew was going to be uh, done in that line. I bought a lot of guys because they look cool, but didn't have any nostalgic attachment. Sure. But this one, this one definitely knocked it out of the park for me because, yeah, I had this guy and he was awesome. And now I have him again and he's even more awesome. And wrist. he's got wrist articulation because he was one of the old molds before they stopped doing that in deluxe guys altogether. So I yay for has, Quake. Bro. My number three choice for 2017, I'm not even sure if it qualifies as a toy, but that's for a later video. What I have here is the Galactic Trading Post Space Walls. Yes, it's basically a build your own Death Star in case you were wondering. And some different fan groups have been clamoring over the years. Hey Hasbro, when are you going to finally make the Death Star playset? When are you going to make the Death Star playset? And honestly, I hope they never do because here it is. This is exactly what you want. Uh, it's a series of different panels that are very screen accurate to the movie, have an extraordinary level of detail, really crisp sculpts. They give you these connectors, and you can connect them together 
in whatever way you like. And you can put them on top of each other. You can put them down the hall. Uh, you can do whatever you want. The white spot is sort of translucent, so you could even set up lights behind it to have lights coming through the light Sweet. panels. If they continue the three and three quarter inch scale the same way that they've done the six inch scale, you'll see doors, uh, maybe curved walls, other types of panels, other sorts of accessories. But this stuff is phenomenal. It's not that cheap, but you will never find a nicer diorama for your Star Wars bad yeah. guys. It's an adult collectible Lego. My number three, surprise, it's another Transformer, huh? is the uh, MMC Megatron. This guy is not only amazing to play with, but you get so much for what you pay for especially if you got them from planet steel express he has pieces where you easily can change out like the chest and the head so you can have old school minor uh, gladiator pit megatron or you can change it out and you can have regular up-to-date lost light megatron and you got mace with him you got a sword with him metal ones of those as well if you got it from planet steel express for what you pay for him and for what you get he is a great deal also a fantastic toy with an easy transformation i really really like this guy he looks awesome i think it's a phenomenal toy my number three as pictured here eventually <laughs> is mezco's 112 red skull exclusive green nazi jumpsuit version and I've wanted this toy since I first saw Red Skull fighting Captain America in 1970-whatever when the Marvel cartoons were out. I didn't know we were going to do a top five list this year. I didn't think there was that much interest. Apparently people wanted it. People like it. So mine is unfortunately packed away so I could move and would have taken way too much time and effort that is not the shock and awe way. He's amazing. I love him. He comes with two heads. He comes with a gazillion hands, a stand. He comes with the cosmic cube. It it's, looks like a Jack Kirby Red Skull head. Mezco not screwed their fans with the classic oh Punisher. Yeah. <laughs> this guy might have also been on my list because I would have totally bought him. So my number two toy of the year is Hasbro's San Diego exclusive box set figure Thor Odinson. Part of the reason I picked this guy so high, besides the fact that he's Thor and is awesome, is because it's everything Wilson hates. It's a fancy guy, it's a big burly guy, it's a Marvel legend, it's articulated, it costs much. I love it. F*** you, Wilson. Well, hold on. I like Marvel Legends. No, he said f*** you, Wilson. No. <laughs> he's great. All his articulation scream is amazing. He's got crazy back ab, crazy forward ab. His hair is soft enough that he can look up and down. And before Moon Knight, he had crazy new Marvel Legend ankle articulation where there's a ball joint yeah. that spins around. And it came with Wilson's favorite axe, Yarn Bjorn. <laughs> but it is a completely new sculpt, way more accurate than the one that came with the build a figure Odin Wave. There, look at that. That is a man right there. It actually looks good. Yeah. So my number two, controversially between the three of us, is the Rebirth Flash from the Target 2-pack exclusive. It also comes with Ezra Miller Flash. Now, why do I like them? Well, first of all, this is the first Flash that I personally have gotten where I feel like I can move him around, play with him, and he has the best articulation of any Flash that I have. He's pretty much everything that I've wanted so far in a Flash toy that I haven't been able to get. He doesn't have ankle tilt, but he does have thigh swivel. I've always liked these little electric pieces that you can put on him. If I could have gotten this Flash or a Flash similar to this one back when I bought the DC Collectibles one, I would have been happy, but for the time being, I personally think he is the best normal action figure flash that you can get your hands on. I'm not afraid this one's going to break, and I've had tons of fun with him and tons of fun playing with him with my child. So that is why he is my number two. See, I didn't know you were such a huge Flash fan. That yeah. puts it into perspective. Yes. Because as a non-huge Flash fan, it's a nice enough looking figure, but it's like, it's the Flash. Who cares? Right. But if you like the Flash... Oh, and yeah. that 
changes things. Number two, Topher. My number two for 2017 is the Hasbro Target Exclusive 3-Pack Royal Guard. So 2017 has been a terrible year for collecting three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures. Very few super articulated figures, and honestly the ones that came out were kind of not great. And even the not super articulated figures were just kind of piss poor. And then, this three pack snuck out right at the last minute. It was almost impossible to find in stores. For this figure, the helmet and the cloak are one piece. Um, but it acts like one big ball jointed head. I see. For those of you who might be wondering, no, this doesn't fit on the vintage collection body. The shoulders of the vintage collection body are too wide. But what I realized is I don't care. <laughs> because this, this is all I have ever wanted a Royal Guard figure to do, is just stand there and look like this. And of all the Royal Guard figures that have ever been, this one looks just perfect. This version does everything right. I love it. I can't believe that I love a non-articulated Star Wars figure this much and that it's my number two figure of the year. I must say he looks really great in front of your diorama, makeshift diorama thing. My number one toy for 2017 says 1969. is the Lego NASA Apollo Saturn V rocket which was part of their Lego Ideas series. I love everything about this. It's perfect. I think it's the exact expression of what Lego Ideas should be all about. You know, let's create something that looks really good, that has some, some cultural significance, that has some historical significance, and that gives us an opportunity to get something that we wouldn't normally get. You know, we don't need uh, another Star Wars ship. We need stuff like this, because this isn't part of any of the other Lego lines. Mm. The chances of getting something like this otherwise are pretty much non-existent. But this thing, I mean, it's, it's phenomenally detailed. It looks just right. The scaling is great. It's huge. It even has little astronaut micro figures and a little flag to put on the moon. But they've all scaled everything. You know, they show how all the stages work here. Everything does what it's supposed to do. Uh, it's just, it's super awesome. It's beautiful. You even get a little oh, splashdown module. And it even has 1,969 pieces to commemorate the year of the first lunar landing. I love it. It's amazing. It's the first I've seen of it, but I want one so bad now. It's nice. Well said, Rick. So my number one toy of 2017 is the Iron Factory Bridge Watcher, I believe is what he's called, a.k.a. Tiny Shockwave. We reviewed this guy, and he is so fun, so articulated. He is literally, I believe, my favorite, if not the best Shockwave that I own. Iron Factory, I have started to fall in love with their stuff, and the amount of articulation that these guys get, and their transformations are easy, and they're just fun. I've started to get their Bruticus, of course, because Bruticus is my combiner. This Shockwave, I don't know that I can find anything to complain about. I like him so much that he has strongly made me consider switching totally to just this size th third-party Transformers. What? Yeah, because the Iron Factory stuff, I find the price point is cheaper. They're starting to do some good stuff. Everything I've bought from them so far, I've liked. A lot. And I'm just really excited to see what they come out with. Yeah, he's number one. I've had so much fun with him. The Iron Factory stuff is extraordinary. I mean, if you were going to start a Transformers collection from scratch, yeah. Iron Factory is a good way to go. They're a good, affordable way to get into the third-party game. Number one for me, love the character, love the toy. It's a great toy. Yes, Looks it great. Good choice. Uh, my number one toy of the year is Megatron. For all the reasons that we listed the last time, he looks perfect to me. He is super fun to play with. I've only transformed him once because I just play with like taking his different pieces off and on. I don't care that he doesn't turn into a gun. I don't care that he turns into a goofy tank or spaceship. I love it. It looks great. In my opinion, he is ridiculously underpriced. Underpriced? Yeah, yeah. He's a, I, I disagree with that. I think he's perfectly priced. If you pay attention to what the toys Wilson has bought and I have bought from MMC in the last couple of years, he is underpriced with how they price everything else. Wilson disagrees. We had a 
lovely discussion <laughs> yeah. about it the other day. He's underpriced. He should be like 150 bucks compared to what they do with other guys. He's almost the same size as Roadbuster and Tarn, if not the same size that Wilson finally kind of agreed on once I showed him. Like, look, he's the same size. But he comes with so much extra crap and it all works well it all attaches fine it all looks great it is all as comic accurate as you can get with everyone draws them differently i can't imagine there ever being another megatron that i'll ever want to even think about buying with one exception and that is nothing <laughs> if they made him into a gun i might yeah. think about <clears throat> something i think i forgot to mention he comes with so many different pieces that you basically can make another toy you can make drill megatron you can make this megatron you can mix, mix and, and match, match. I, that's what i do is i'm yeah, mixing like, him. yeah he's essentially two or three toys in yeah. one and his transformation is very, very simple yeah i love the articulation scheme it all works great probably buy whatever stupid repaint mmc turns him into just because i love this I toy what, just I, good choice very happy good job mmc so there you have it we hope you guys enjoyed it it's kind of fun for us to do and try and remember what we got throughout you know a whole year's worth of toys it's also kind of depressing to go back and see how much money we've oh my spent God. buy that, a new car yeah that's been our picks our top fives so thank you for watching please like and subscribe you can find all of the social media stuff in the show notes we thank you all for watching and supporting us throughout this year and hope you continue to do so tell your friends and family and leave comments what you think your favorite toys yeah. were this year i'd love to hear everybody's top five absolutely or at least their top choice or just toys year. you liked you don't have to pick yeah. five who cares or tell us why the ones we picked are totally wrong i thought it was phenomenal year i want it to be a weak year because i want to save some goddamn money i think that money. would be good too but unfortunately See, it's not 2017 is probably one of the slowest toy years for the stuff I buy in recent memory. You should go look at the giant pile of 2017 toys waiting for you to buy. <laughs> On that note, bye! <laughs>